So Sadal has thought a lot about this and she's here to talk with us about it. Sadal, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, you appear to be perched in a ladder close to the peak of Baker Library. At <laughs> School. And I'm actually standing what looks like on the lawn of Baker <laughs> Library. Of course, neither one of us are in either of those places. And we're not in the same room, which, so we're going to demonstrate the technology today. Yes, yes, yes. We're actually on Zoom. And uh, I'm not perched and you're not floating on Baker Lawn. We're actually using background images on Zoom, uh, which is a terrific feature. I love this feature. Yeah, I, didn't even know, I didn't even know we could do it until, you know, we, we started uh, just a few minutes ago getting online together and you showed us how to do this uh, really fast. So this only took a few moments to create a really cool virtual background. Yes. And you know why I like this? I like this a lot, especially for people who have to work at home, who are worried about, do I need to clean my house? Do I need yeah. to prepare lighting? Do I need to prepare all these things before I get on my conference call? Actually, you don't. You can very quickly set a virtual background as we did, Brian. I mean, it took us, what, two minutes, three yeah. minutes, and choose the one that works for you. And uh, it covers whatever background that you have. You have great lighting, and then you get on your call. It's kind of like they do on television, actually. Don't you do, could, it's like it's like the anchors. Yeah, you could yeah. be anywhere in the world that you want to be, and uh, you know, without any expense. You know, one of the things I do want people who are who are watching us to know about is that this week at Harvard Business School and Harvard University, more broadly, uh, we announced that we are going to be asking students to to stay home following spring break, which happens here next week, and to finish out the semester uh, doing their classes remotely. And so this conversation we're having today couldn't be more timely, just as organizations like Harvard Business School think about what does it mean to scale this kind of a, a remote uh, engagement with each other uh, up to you know the, the hundreds or thousands of people trying to participate in these kind of conversations. So I'm really glad we're having the conversation. I am too, I am too. We're joining many institutions, many companies, many, many, I'm talking about by the millions, if you look around the world, who have asked, their employees to begin working from home. I've been following the hashtag, hashtag WFH uh, for uh, several days now, and people have questions and very, very suddenly trying to figure out how do I work remotely? So hopefully through this conversation, we'll be able to answer a number of the questions that have come in for us. Yeah. And so I've got some questions. Can I just start, you know, throwing these out at you and, and we'll go from there? Let's and these, do it. these questions came, we sort of crowdsourced these. So these are coming from people who are thinking about this now and probably dealing with some of this stuff. And, and you know, one of the first questions has to do with all of a sudden I find myself in a situation where I'm not going into the office. You know, I'm used to being in the office. I'm a social person and you know, I'm used to being with my coworkers. And yet now I'm told I've got to work from home. Um, even if you have the technology, how do you stay focused when you're at home? And how do you think about focusing on your job? And how do you deal with kind of the mental aspects of sort of being in isolation? It's a, it's a very, very important question because suddenly your regular routine has gone away. And the thing to do actually is to create a new routine that is a home routine. Mm -hmm. And this new routine has to have a start time, and an end time. You've got to get up. You've got to take a shower like you normally do. You really, yeah. really do. You've got to get dressed. You may not wear the same things that you usually wear when you go to work, but you've got to get dressed and you've got to go to the place that is the most comfortable for you at the home or the space where you would work and start the work day. So you need a set of practices, disciplined set of practices that are comfortable for you, and you can experiment to see what works for you and start your work day. And that allows you to create the kind of routine and discipline that you follow on a regular basis. Yeah. The other thing is make sure that you remain in contact with your colleagues throughout the day. Just before, just because you no longer are going into the office doesn't mean that you have to isolate yourself fully. Mm -hmm. You need to continue to remain engaged with your coworkers, whether it's through email, if you have some enterprise-wide uh, social media um, type of uh, software, 
inside your, your organizations like Slack or Jive or Yammer that you've been using, continue to use those. In fact, I would say increase the usage of those types of tools in your organization. And so continue to engage with people on a regular basis so that you're not isolating. So number one, the routines are very important. Number two, the contact with others are important. And then move. Don't yeah. sit all day. If you're used to a certain level of physical and physiological activity uh, uh, on a regular basis, make sure you recreate that. Otherwise, you're really going to start feeling bad. Yeah. How, how do you fight the, um, the sort of challenges of, uh, you know, um, diversion when you're at home? You've got a dog. You know, the dog wants to play, right? Or, yes. or you know, there's a, there's a show on that, you know, there's, you know, there's something that you want to maybe watch on, on TV. I mean, when you're at work, yes. those distractions just don't come at you the same way as you do when you're at home. And when people are at home, I, I feel like you get, I know that I get into kind of like my home routine, which is, yes. which is very different. How do, you, how do you sort of fight against that? Yes, which is why it's really important to create work routines at home. Yeah. And you have to be really, really, really disciplined. I work from home uh, a good deal uh, because I write a lot. Uh, as you know, I'm a writer on top of other things. Uh, and sometimes I actually have a lot of calls that I make uh, because um, uh, of my global, the global part of my job means that sometimes I'm making calls at 5 a.m. or at 9, 10, 11 p.m., depending mm -hmm. on where my partners are anywhere in the world. So you actually really need to create and carve out the space, the physical location where work is taking place, and you need to be very disciplined. Having said that, you also have flexibility when you're working from home. Yeah. Which means playing with the dog is perfectly fine. Play with the dog if the dog is there. It also means that you don't need to have lunch at noon anymore. You can eat lunch at 11 if you want to. Right. Flexibility uh, is, is a little bit different. You can take a walk at a certain time if you want to, and that's perfectly fine. And managers and organizations need to understand that the rhythm of the of, of the uh, of work and the workflow is a little bit different and they need to accommodate that especially some of the things that we're seeing and hearing now is that my partner's also working uh, mm. uh, at home and now we have space that we need to have to figure out and wow the um our, our children may be home more than you're used to so you need to navigate childcare a little bit differently than we had to so yeah. you need to be a little bit flexible at the moment because the world is in a different spot right now it might change in a little while but we need to accommodate people and so that brings up another question, which is, I know when we've talked about remote working here at Harvard Business School, it's a topic that comes up a lot. The commutes have been terrible in Boston. We just won this award. Second <laughs> in a row, we have the worst traffic in the country. So we're really thrilled about that. But, but what that means is that we're trying to find ways to accommodate people and make the schedule more flexible. And the issue that, that, we, that we hear a lot um, is, how do I know my team is really working? You know, how... How can I how can I hold them accountable if if I'm not in their presence and you know and I know that they're that they're at work? I'm still laughing about our award of all the awards. You know yeah. how can I mean that one? Wow, um, I don't know. You know, not to be so proud of. I know. Um, but but how can I make sure um, my team is working? Listen. This is what I always say, especially when it comes to remote work or I'm working from home or my team is globally distributed so I don't see them. You have to trust your team. Yeah. This is where I get inspiration always from Ernest Hemingway who says the way to trust people is to give them trust. That's the way you get trust. It's to trust people. You know your team is working because they're delivering on the work that you've set out for them. Mm -hmm. And if they're not delivering on the work that you've set out for them, then you manage it and you deal with it. So, but the idea of monitoring people or looking at what they're doing at a particular time needs to go away. 
You yeah. cannot do that with remote work. You cannot do that when people are working from home. You've got to abandon all notions of monitoring people when they're working from home. But the thing that you want to do, one of the first things that you want to do when people are starting to work from home as a manager is to do a team or a group launch. Uh -huh. What do we mean by that? You want to get on a call, preferably a video call. I'm hoping that uh, you have access to a video call, kind of like we have right now yeah. uh, with Brian. And you do what's called a group launch, a team launch. Every team has to have some kind of a launch. This is uh, one of the success factors for groups or teams, is a launch. And over time, every group of, or a team should have what's called a relaunch to make sure that we're checking on the health of the team or the group and to see how we're doing. But now that people are suddenly doing the hashtag WFH, uh, uh, working from home, get your group together and say, okay, now that we're working from home, let's talk about how should we best operate as a group? Yeah. How should we communicate? How often should we communicate? What are the challenges that each of us might have? How can we overcome them? How can we work together as a group to overcome those? How can we make sure that we remain connected with one another? How can we make sure that we continue to have the informal contact that we're used to? And then as a team, as a group, you can come up with creative ideas. There's some things that uh, you can do. For example, Brian, you can still have happy hour, you know, oh, remotely. Really? <laughs> you can. And you you're can not driving. Lunch together. You can yeah. have lunch together remotely. Uh -huh. You can do a lot of fun things together. You can remain connected as a group, even though you're not at the same place. So I would do a launch to begin to set up our new way of working, get some agreements, get people on the same page, and get going. Yeah, that's that's great advice. It sounds like you really need solid tools and support to make this work. Can you talk a little bit about you know how do you how do you train people up uh, to get them to feel comfortable? Because even when you're at work, you run into an issue, you can just call IT and over, or they come over and they'll fix your they'll fix whatever's broken. When you're at home, it's a different different story. So it is a different story.